Hey, what is up everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in to another one of my videos. And in today's video, we're going to look at exactly how I personally trade uh, Tomb Forks and what my thought process is in order to secure gains, even in a bear market. Now, before we jump into this video, please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And make sure you hit that bell notification so that you are notified of these very time sensitive videos. In this video, we're going to be looking at Savannah Finance, Polaris Finance, and Repay Finance, and going over exactly how I personally uh, focus on these three main tomb forks for both short term and long term gains. I will also be discussing which projects I hold long term and which projects I am in and out of just trying to accumulate as much profits as I can. Now right off the bat, Savannah Finance, as you guys will know, is created by the MM Finance team and uh, it has been around for a few months. It's doing pretty well. However, recently because of the market downturn and a lot of drama and everything, the price of M share went all the way from 20,000 region all the way down to a 1,700 or 1,500 at its lows. Um, and I personally uh, have been accumulating at this range. Now, in regards to making money, you guys could see right here in our Discord, I mentioned that there is a potential 25% move to the upside on the short term time frame. As you guys can see here, I posted this at 6.47 p.m. yesterday. And um, if we look further below, this actually ended up playing out at uh this ended up playing out by 11 p.m so it took approximately four a little bit more than four hours and we saw this 25 percent gain uh happen right here and as a matter of fact it continued further and went up all the way uh until a 47 percent gain if you calculate it from the top now um what made me do this uh call out and the people that essentially followed me why were we able to get these gains well, as you guys can see here, somebody asked them, how even in a bear market did you predict this move upwards? And there was a few things that were um, put into place. Uh, the question was, was it TA or something else? Now, obviously I had this uh, TA laid out. So number one reason, as you guys can see here, is TA. So here, as you guys can see, what I did is I realized that we have higher lows every time, right? Uh, and we are bouncing on that same level. Now this level for me personally, I drew this level a long time ago. Um, as you guys could see, it was acting as a support here. So every time we came here, it acted as a support and bounced up, came here, bounced up. And these are very good scalping trade opportunities. You could have easily bought at any of these dips and got in, you know, a substantial amount of gains. Even if you come here, right here, you know, 20, 30%, these are big gains, right? However, right here, you guys can see that we actually broke through this level. We lost this level of support. And that's because as I say uh, in the discord though, the more times we test a level, the more likely it is to essentially break that level. Okay. Right. So as you guys can see, one, two, three on the fourth time we broke it. And similarly, I was looking at this and it, the same rule applies to the opposite side. The more times that a price tests what now is resistance. So remember guys, it was support before now it's resistance, the higher probability that it is going to break as you guys can see right here once again we had the higher lows right so every time it was higher and higher getting tighter and tighter so i had my line drawn exactly where i need to buy and i bought i bought every time we hit this line i bought and as you guys can see here one two three and on the fourth time we broke through the um this uh line of resistance similarly to how we broke underneath it took a total of four times now i'm not saying that it will always be four times that's not my point my point is as, as long as we are testing a level right and testing a resistance or support there's a higher chance that the more it tests that level of support or resistance the higher probability that it will be broken and I noticed that that's why around this time right here on the 645 region right here I made the call out in our discord and as you guys can see it did pump further now this was one of the one of the multiple reasons as to why I thought that now as you guys can see I wrote secondly the second reason is Oasis is out of debt 
So the APRs uh, on the boardroom were absolutely degen, you know, around 3% every single day. Obviously that has come down to around 2.3 or 2.4%, which is still absolutely amazing. Number three, another reason was that Bitcoin was flirting with $30,000 and uh, the markets overall were cooling down. As you guys know, uh, if you are in the crypto scene and not under a rock, you will know that Bitcoin went to a low of 25,000 and it is kind of cooling down a little bit. And although I do not think we're out of the storm just yet. Um, and the, the other thing I mentioned was that sell-offs are most likely done as the price has already dropped so much, only holders remain. So um, price dropped 80, 90% already. So I don't think that there's a lot of scalpers right now. Um, and even if they are, the um, I believe mostly people will be buying now to be staking it in the Oasis rather than buying it just to flip. Um, and as you guys can see, I said, I think my target of 25% tonight was rather conservative. Let's see how far it goes now that Savannah is fully functional let's print and of course we are going higher now of course guys remember this is all uh because of the several variables that i mentioned remember this goes for whether you're leverage trading whether you're buying shares or anything like that the more confluence you can have so the more um things that are coming in alignment the more probability you have because remember guys every trade at its base is a 50 50 it's a gamble it's 50 percent up or 50 percent down However, when you can add all these other variables, you know, there's smaller, smaller variables, it creates a higher probability for your trade to be successful. And that's why this trade, for example, yesterday was successful. Now, the other project we're going to look at is Repay Finance. Now, Repay, for me, I have been in this project for a long time. It always gets pegged and loses peg and gets pegged and loses peg all the time. And... Um, at the first time that I held on to the share tokens, I realized my mistake. And that is the fact that whenever we do lose peg, it is always good to sell your share tokens as the price do, does tend to drop really quickly as people sell their share tokens to buy the peg token, which is actually what the protocol encourages you to do. And similarly, um, if, once again, if we look back in our discord in the callouts channel, you will see that about three weeks ago, I mentioned that it would be a good time to buy pay. Now bear in mind at that time pay was $21 and it pumped all the way up to that $80 range right here. So about three to four X from our call out, which is substantially, which is a great amount of money to be made. And not only that, on top of that, we were able to farm throughout this entire time, right? We were able to get really, really high APRs, you know, even upwards of 10% a day. Uh, while our assets appreciated three times or four times our purchase value. So it was a substantially good uh, run that we had here. However, as soon as the market crashed, once again, it is not the project's fault. As soon as the market did have this insane crash, um, we did see, unfortunately, both PAVAX and PFTM lose peg, right? And as soon as they lost peg, unfortunately, this was in the middle of the night for me, so I was asleep. But when I did wake up, I saw the price going from the $70, $80 range all the way down to like $45. And that made me realize that it is time for me to sell my tokens because of the fact that um, the overall market structure is not looking that good. And of course, we lost pegs, so the share tokens actually have no value. So I sold my tokens here and I actually bought some PAVAX uh, around this region right here, around $0.75. Cents um to try to support the protocol because remember guys it's never good to uh bite the hand that feeds you and of course you know i made a good amount of money so of course i'm going to support the protocol and yesterday actually at 25 dollars, i actually bought some more share tokens because i recognized that the community is very strong and both the peg tokens are coming up rather quickly as you guys can see we dropped all the way to 0.7 and even though we had, uh, you know, AVAX today pump like crazy up 23% and Phantom pump like crazy up almost 30% today, um, we can see that these tokens have pumped even more, which is why they are catching up in peg. So I do definitely think that we will get this peg. I do once again, look always at the community. So jump into their discord, look at the community, whether the community is strong or whether the community has given up. Because as soon as the community gives up, you definitely need to be uh, getting out of your position. And if you want, you can, of course, LP with PFTM or PAVAX. 
and support the protocol and still get some APR. But I personally wouldn't be holding share tokens as um, you know they will tend to drop a lot in value. So once again, guys, there is other variables in place, right? So we have basic TA. And of course, on top of that, we have common sense that since we lost peg, the bank is not printing anymore. So if you guys don't know what the bank is, the bank is where you essentially go to uh, deposit or stake your pay or your share tokens and you get a higher amount of uh, APR because you receive PA backs. Um, and as, since we lost peg on two of the tokens, I recognize that the share token will drop. And as you guys can see, in a matter of uh, one day or two days, it went from that $70 all the way down to $10, $11, um, which is sad to see, but that's just how Tomb Forks work. So you need to be in and out. And of course, as I said, if you have profited, take some of those profits and support the protocol by buying some of the PA VAX or PFTMs or alternatively buying bonds. Um, to support the protocol. And once again, if I do see that we are not moving and getting closer to that peg price that we have been doing since yesterday, I personally will be once again selling my share tokens because I'm not here to hold it to zero. The last project I want to look at is Polaris Finance. Now, as you guys know, I made a video um, a couple of days ago as well in regards to the Eternal launch. As you guys can see, they have updated the UI. The uh, Eternal will be launching on uh, tomorrow and as such I do believe that it will be a very lucrative for people that are in the space to deposit their ethereum and earn upwards of 1% every single day if you haven't seen that video I definitely suggest you guys see it as I do know a lot of people in the crypto scene obviously hold ethereum and as such if you can make money in a safe place uh, with your ethereum I think it's the smartest thing to do once again, what we do is we jump over to their Discord. On the right side here, you guys can see we are at 1.22 peg. Now, bear in mind, this is one of my long-term projects. I definitely do see myself holding this project for days and days and days to come. I have not sold any of my S Polar, and I don't intend to sell any of my share tokens yet because of the fact that uh, we rarely lose peg, and that's because of the fact that the emissions are under control. They do not give out you know, 10% daily, 8% daily, nothing like that. They give out a reasonable 1% or 1.2% every single day. And that, in my opinion, is the most reasonable thing to do um, as a project with a good reputation and a project that has a substantial amount of backing behind it. I definitely think Polaris Finance is here to stay. And as such, I am holding on to my S Polars. And as a matter of fact, um, I actually uh, have this line drawn out here from before. As you guys can see, this was acting as a support. Um, and I did actually think this is back in April. I thought we were going to pop up here and retest, but we never actually retested and continued higher. Um, unfortunately, when it did come to this level, it came for a short period of time. And during this time, I was asleep. Um, as you guys can see, it was around 4 a.m. for me, so I was asleep. So when I did wake up, it was around this $250 mark, which for me was still a steal because of the fact that, uh, you know, I am extremely bullish on the team and I do know what they are going to do next, which is extremely bullish. And as such, um, I did buy myself a substantial amount uh, of S Polar around this region. Um, and we are already in profit. But regardless, I don't look at the price too much because it does give me a healthy, healthy earning every single day. Now, with that being said, guys, out of these three projects for me, Polaris Finance is definitely the project that I hold closest to my heart and as such will hold for the longest period of time. Savannah Finance is obviously another project that is very good and I am happy to hold M shares for a long term here because of the fact that I know that the team is the MM Finance team. They're not simply going to give up. They're probably one of the best teams I've seen in the DeFi scene um, as of now with not only how well they communicate with the community, but how quickly they take action. And Repay Finance, I have been uh, in and out of this project for, I want to say, at least a month and a half. And I have been uh, accumulating a good amount of profit from them by simply um, not only by buying the share token and uh, watching it go up, but also by aiding the protocol and myself by creating LPs with PAVAX, AVAX, 
Um, so I definitely do see myself being in this a little bit long term as well. However, with pay, I definitely do not hold it long term as it is extremely volatile as I showed you guys. And as such, it is very smart to time your entries and time your exits. It is always good to have a good entry and it is always good to have a good exit. You don't need to have the best entry or the best exit. You don't need to time the bottom or the top. As long as you can secure some profits, you will be good to go for the next run up. That is going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys were able to extract some information from this video. If you thought this video was helpful, please make sure you like the video. So that it helps the YouTube algorithm. And of course, join our Discord as we are very active there. And I would love to talk to all of you more about Tomb Forks. It is probably my favorite topic to talk about. Being a part of at least 30 plus Tomb Forks, I definitely consider myself to have at least a little bit of knowledge um that i can perhaps share with you and hopefully the rest of the community and if anything maybe i can learn from you guys so with that being said guys i hope you all have an amazing end of the week and as always guys let's get that bag peace